Nuclear experts in Japan are busy planning out their next steps in the cleanup of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The operator says all the damaged reactors are now in a state of cold shutdown. Spokesperson for the Tokyo Electric Power Company says temperatures at the bottom of the reactors are hovering between 30 to 60 degrees Celsius. They've dropped well below the 100 degrees Celsius threshold required for cold shutdown. And they say radioactive substances emitted from the plant have been significantly reduced. Still, nuclear experts say they don't fully understand what's going on inside. And they say the people at TEPCO don't know either. On tonight's Nuclear Watch, NHK World's commentator Noriyuki Mizuno looks at some of the challenges for TEPCO and the Japanese government. Our conversation was in Japanese with simultaneous interpretation. It does seem as if the plant is no longer in the dangerous state it was in immediately after the accident. It appears as if things have calmed down a great deal, but there is still much instability. The power plant is not yet completely safe, and I question whether it can be said that the accident has been contained. The most important thing to find out right now is the temperature of the molten fuel and the cooling water. At reactor number one, however, they believe that most of the molten fuel has fallen to the bottom of the containment vessel, where there is no thermometer. The amount of water has not been measured accurately with a water gauge and has only been guessed. Some of the molten fuel could be exposed from the water. As for reactor number two in November, they suspected that the plant had gone critical again, with continuous nuclear fission occurring. That incident underscored how little is known about the state of the molten fuel still, so it's hard to say that it's safe. When criticality was suspected, a gas detector recently added to the inside of the containment vessel was used to verify that criticality had not occurred. If the fuel rods are to melt again, then radioactive substances and radioactive gas would be released, so the containment vessel's gas detector is effective in identifying whether an anomaly has occurred. Reactors number one and two have gas detectors installed, but at reactor number three, the radiation level is too high and no detector has been added. The reactor building must be decontaminated so that a gas detector can be installed as soon as possible. As for the all-important cooling system, there have been several incidents of contaminated water leaking this month, with some of it reaching the ocean. The system is temporary as it uses non-robust hoses. It is imperative that they switch to a proper stainless steel cooling system to speed up the process of making the nuclear power plant safe. Working on three nuclear reactors and the containment vessel to remove the melted down fuel and finally decommission the reactors is a huge challenge which has never been experienced before. The first major challenge is to fill water. In order to shield a powerful radiation, they need to fill the reactor and containment vessel with water. But the containment vessel has holes which need to be plugged. The area has high radiation levels, making it impossible for people to work. Whether a radiation-resistant robot can be developed is key. An even more challenging task is the removal of the fuel. A remote-controlled robotic arm will be needed. The 1979 Three Mile Island nuclear reactor accident in the U.S. offers some hints. This image shows a portion of the molten fuel that was removed from Three Mile Island, provided to Japan from the U.S. for research purposes. At that time, a drill was used to gouge and remove the fuel. In order to understand what types of removal devices to develop, this fuel should be examined closely to identify how hard it is, for example. However, a lot of the technology will be developed for the first time in the world. There is a limit to what Japan can do alone. Japan should call on the world for cooperation and engage the IAEA in an international effort to advance this work.